Amazon and mortgage provider Better.com have come up with a new way for Amazon employees to buy a home with stock. Better.com's new product, Equity Unlocker, will allow Amazon employees to pledge their Amazon stock towards a down payment for home loans instead of using cash. Banks already offer this to high net worth clients, but this program will be a little different in that it will be protected against margin calls. In other words, if Amazon stock price slides, buyers won't be required to pledge more stock as collateral. However, there is a pretty big catch. Employees have to pledge stock totaling twice the value of the down payment loan. And Better.com will also charge a higher rate on these stock-based loans, between 0.25 and 2.5% higher than standard mortgage rates. There is a nice benefit, and that is that the program is available to laid off Amazon employees who still have restricted stock units. So, Scott, why are they doing this? Or more specifically, what, what do Better.com and Amazon have to gain here with this program? So Amazon has a million and a half employees. And the, it incentivizes employees to hold on to their stock. So it's seen as a benefit, right? I work at a, with a company where I can use my stock as collateral for a down payment on a house. That's a tangible mm-hmm. benefit. And and by the way, I should disclose, I'm an investor in Better.com. I mm-hmm. invested at the right before the pandemic. So I invested, I think, in 2019. Uh, but it's a benefit to employees. And say you have stock options that are 200 grand in the money. If you hold on to the stock and, you, and the stock doubles, you not only double your equity holdings, but you doubled it on pre-tax income. One of the greatest tax advantage investments in history is the fact that stock grows in value tax deferred. And so that's powerful. So if people believe an Amazon stock is, is down, you know, whether you think it's cheap or not is subjective, but it is down. Maybe people think, well, I finally built up some stock. I think it's going to do really well. I don't want to sell it, but I want to buy a house. And I'm willing to take a bit of a hit and pay additional mortgage interest. But this is just simply put a bet on the stock price. Um, So they're saying that there's this, you know, 0.25 to 2.5% premium that you have to pay on the regular rate. And mm -hmm. regular mortgage rates in in Seattle, as the example, are around 8%. So let's assume that you're paying 9% on that uh, on that down payment loan and you're you've pledged the Amazon stock as your collateral. You know, I guess for the first few years, the 9% makes sense. But, you know, ultimately, aren't you going to sell your Amazon stock at some point anyway? Like, when would this make sense, in your opinion? So you got to think like a rich person. And Mm -hmm. this is how rich people think. Never sell, just borrow against your stock. Let the stock continue to grow. If you think that the stock's going to continue to go up and the natural trajectory of the market is up, you should always look at your portfolio and make sure you're not too concentrated because when you work somewhere, you're investing your human capital. So when, to invest your human capital and the majority of your financial capital in one, one entity, you, that's not something you want to do, especially as you get older. And you want to mm-hmm. look at whether or not you're diversified enough. But this is, or what employees are saying is, I don't want to, I don't want to de-risk my Amazon stock. I'm comfortable with what I hold and I'm going to borrow against it. Mm-hmm. You, you mentioned you're an investor in better.com. Um, could you just explain why this business was attractive to you, how you got involved, your experience there? So I co-invest with venture capitalists where I think the, the, the principal or the partner is someone that I know and trust and I think is very smart. In this case, it's a, a venture capital firm called Activent that's sort of got the hot hand right now. They've had good years even when other VCs are struggling. They just, uh, I think their big exit was Deliver, the company that just got bought for $2 billion. Anyways. Uh, pre-pandemic, uh, they gave me an opportunity to invest in this online mortgage company called Better. And the CEO there has this vision where he said, look, mortgages are still a very complex, labor-intensive product. And how can we use technology to automate and routinize a lot of that process such that we can get people answers faster and then pass that savings back to them? And once interest rates start coming back down in the mortgage market, I mean, the mortgage market has been a terrible business the last 12 months because people don't want to borrow or people don't want to refi when in an accelerating interest rate environment. But I like the idea of using technology to try and reduce the costs of something that can be then passed along to the consumer. In this case, the person taking out the mortgage. I did a call with my quote unquote financial advisor. I have a financial advisor for the first time in my life. 
And he said, if we get, you know, if you have a liquidity event with one of these crazy private investments, you may want to think about paying down your mortgages. And I thought, what are you crazy? It's the best interest rate ever. And he said, not any longer. You're going to have to refi. I have a couple five-year mortgages and they're all coming due next year. And he said, they're going to be more like 6% now. So you may want to consider paying them down because it's no longer just cheap free money. It used to be borrow as much as you could of something like a mortgage or a margin interest rate because the interest rates are so low. That's no longer the case. What was the rate that you were paying? I mean, that you are paying? I have five-year mortgages on my places in um, New York and Florida, and I got them at two and three-eighths, so 2.375, I mean, which oh. is effectively free money. Yeah. Unfortunately, now I'm killing my, kicking myself that I didn't go out 10 or 30 years. I only went out five, so I've got to refi them in 2023 and 2024. Anyways, mm -hmm. Ed, you should have told me. You should have, this is your fault, Ed. <laughs>